Hello again and welcome to the next tutorial about the shape generator and its use with Blender's animation nodes add-on. We are going to take what we created in the last video, a link for this is in the description, and start to combine symmetrical 3D shapes to make something more interesting and configurable. In this case, working towards something that could have a variety of visual applications, like a sci-fi looking structure or a 3D Rorschach test. If combined with modifiers and other add-ons, this could build into something that can quickly create very dynamic objects. If there is enough interest, next time we will look at adding some modifiers to this setup in animation nodes, which will require a little coding knowledge, but not much. If you have any questions, feedback or suggestions, please let us know in the comments. The example file that has been created here will be available from Blender Market. The link is in the description. To start, take the setup created in the previous video. The file is available as part of the Shape Generator add-on on Blender Market. This time we are not going to place the shapes on a square grid, but randomly within a boundary. To do this, first delete the grid mesh and mesh info nodes on the left hand side of the node setup. These nodes were telling the rest of the tree which positions or vectors the objects should be placed on. The nodes can be deleted by selecting them and pressing X. Now press Shift A and add a random vector node. Vectors are used throughout computer graphics to describe things like position, size and rotation. In this case we will be using them to position the objects. The vector created here is bound by the scale parameter, meaning that it will never create a vector larger than say 2, 2, 2 by default. This will stop the objects being created all over the scene. At the moment, the node will only create one random vector. We want to change this so it will actually create a list of vectors. We do that by clicking on the small list icon on the node. A count parameter will appear, telling you how many vectors will be created. Reduce the number of instances on the object instance node to match this count number. We will make this easier to change later. Connect the vector's output on the node to the vector list input on the invoke subprogram node. From there, you should see that the objects are starting to be randomly placed within a certain imaginary boundary in the scene. By changing the seed parameter on the random vector node, you can change the random positions. That's all good, but there is more to do and there are parameters on the shape generator that will help us. But before we move on, we want to make it so that we only have to change one parameter to control both the number of objects and the number of positions. To do this, create an integer input node. Integers are just another word for numbers. Set its parameter to 5 and connect it to both the instances parameter on the object instance node and the count parameter on the random vector node. Now you can control the number of objects and their positions simultaneously. This setup is looking okay, but we want an overall symmetrical shape. The objects need to be placed so that their global coordinates are in the middle of the scene so that they can be mirrored along the central axis. Here we have an option on the shape generator node to position the object locally, and we want to use that instead of the object transforms output node which positions the objects globally. To achieve this, disconnect the link between the vector parameter on the loop input node and the location parameter on the object transforms output node. Reconnect this to the local location parameter on the generate shape node. You should see the setup change in the viewport so that all objects look symmetrical along the central axis because they have been transformed locally. Now you have a dynamic setup where you can change the node seed parameters on both the random vector and random number nodes to quickly create all sorts of interesting shapes. Feel free to have a tweak of the node tree to make it best for your own setup and needs. For instance, you could animate the max rotation parameter on the generate shape node to create abstract animations and use a variety of animation nodes tools to do this. If you wish to change the shape colours to be less psychedelic than the previous setup, go to the Shading tab and select one of the objects. Change the Colour Ramp Nodes drop-down menus to RGB and Constant. 
Now, control click along the solid gradient color to create a new color point. Change this color to something different. You should see different colors appear on the viewport if you are set to material viewport shading. Again, have a play with this setup yourself to create a variety of effects for your needs. Please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this video. Thanks.